Introduction With social media and online activity taking over our lives, it has become a necessity for businesses to work with many strategies that make their online presence effective. Companies now work on employing professionals whose entire job is to come up with different tactics that help businesses increase their online traffic. This traffic is, more often than not, dictated and redirected from search engines like Google. And to please them, search engine optimization has become a fundamental part of the operation. Now, a lot of this redirection of traffic is meant to happen organically. If you are a tech-savvy individual who is able to keep up with the changes in the many algorithms employed by search engines, you will be able to make sure, to some extent, that your website never falls off the radar of said search engines. Strategies that involve such organic ways of building traffic are also a preferred technique, no matter what kind of website you run, because these strategies bring more customers naturally to the product or service a business offers. Research has shown that this increases your website's chances of growing traffic by 20 times when compared to paid advertising, whether you look at the numbers on a desktop or a mobile. SEO strategies are not just a practical way to get more attention from search engines, but are also a marketing strategy that continues to reward you over time. This includes keeping tabs on including the correct keywords for every bit of content you publish on your website because these keywords help search engines give your page the high ranking it deserves. This ranking plays a big role in the order in which search results are displayed for any given user query. This in turn gives your website the visibility you are shooting for. Make your content interesting and relevant, and over time, you will see that something as simple as adding the right keywords will help your traffic skyrocket. But this is not just about strategy. Including the right keywords essentially started off as a way to tell the search engine what your content is about and how it should be indexed. Every search engine uses crawlers to gather information about the content on the Internet. These crawlers come back with binary data, in zeros and ones, that helps the search engine make an index. This index goes through an algorithm designed by the search engine and checks to see if your website matches the query entered by a user. When you optimize your website for a search engine, what you are doing is making sure that the content on the website has all the requisite information and metadata that any person who is looking for such information is likely to type into the search bar. This metadata includes the right title, descriptions, and tags that are relevant to the corresponding content. This needs to be relevant and informative. Let's dig a little deeper into that. What is SEO? When you practice SEO, what you do is make sure the quality and quantity of the content on your website is channeled towards increasing the traffic on your website. This means to give it more visibility and also expose your brand to as many potential customers as possible. This is an organic way of getting better results when someone looks up information you might have. It is a critical part of marketing your product or service on the Internet because trillions of searches are being conducted on the Internet every year, and there are an innumerable number of websites that are competing with you to get the same set of eyeballs. A lot of these commercial operations and searches are a big part of how users find brands and their services. When you do a good job with search engine optimization, your website gets better rankings for keywords and phrases from the search engines, and that improves your brand's visibility. This is no longer the open secret that it used to be a few years back. This means businesses have gotten good at tricking search engines to rank their web pages higher to get visibility. So search engines are constantly tightening the screws by changing the parameters through which they rank websites to make the search results more useful to the user instead of benefiting businesses with subpar content. This is why you need to be on your toes and in the loop on new practices. Search engines are also trying to retain traffic on their search results page instead of redirecting users to other web pages because advertising is how they make their money. This is why you see certain features on the home page. Think about this. The Search Engine Results page, or SERP, has both ads and organic results. One such feature is the Featured Snippet, also referred to as the Answer Box. This feature gives the user a direct answer to a specific question, instead of redirecting them to a different web page. Search engines are able to make money more efficiently when they cater to the user's needs by keeping them on the SERP pages for a short period of time. But lucky for businesses, 
Some of these can be beaten fair and square with good search engine optimization techniques. That's how, when a user types a direct question into the search panel, they get a brief summary of text from the highest ranking page, which possibly answers the question right away. This could be an organic result based on good SEO. At the heart of it, SEO is basically just understanding the words your potential customer is typing into a search engine when looking for your website and how you can use that knowledge to draw them towards your website instead of your competition. So, it is fundamentally about understanding your customers. Keyword research. When I say keyword research, I'm talking about words and phrases that the content on your website should have. This makes it easy for users searching for such content to find your website easily when they type in specific words into the search bar. The idea is to synchronize your understanding of the user's preferences with the search engine's data so that it can show your website up top when users look for those keywords. This is one of the most important elements of search engine optimization. Typically, the process starts with creating a list of keywords that are relevant to the content you are trying to optimize. It takes time and effort, but the results are phenomenal and makes it totally worth investing your resources. A lot of individuals, including some professionals, look for SEO keywords only once and don't update them from time to time. Another mistake is to add only the most popular keywords, which means you will be one of the many websites that have added the same set of keywords. I've talked about updating keywords being an ongoing process. That is because the internet, unsurprisingly, changes every so often, and you need to keep up with it. And updating keywords is like maintenance for the content on the website. You need people to recognize the content from the simplest means, like the title and the accompanying description. This makes them feel like they are talking to a human, albeit a professional, and not a bot or an institution that is out of touch with the present world. This also keeps your web page ranked on top, since these will be the keywords your users are entering into the search bar. There are plenty of tools online that can help you find a bunch of keywords related to a subject, but you must also do your own homework and make sure you keep track of the results on your trial and error techniques. Keyword research is also of great use to marketers in understanding the psyche of buyers. It tells them what is in high demand and how to use a popular keyword to optimize the content but also beat the competition organically. You also learn about the kind of language the demographic that is most likely to seek your products or services is using. Now, it is not enough to find the keywords. You need to know in what order to enter them to get the best results in terms of search engine optimization. The first order of business is to find high attention or long tail keywords for your content and add them in the title if possible and also in the body of the text. It is also highly recommended that you place it in the metadata like file names of the images and the URL. Now, let's move on to a much deeper method of optimizing your website. This means going beyond the micro and metadata. It's called on-page SEO, and that's our next chapter. On-page SEO. On-page optimization leads to better search ranking for your website and also increases traffic, which improves the conversion rate. The elements of the website that could use your help are both text and pictorial. You must also consider the HTML code at the back end and the user experience at the front end of the website. There is also off-page optimization, which is the work you need to do outside your own website, which includes external links and social media platforms. But let's focus on the on-page factors for now. This is the next important factor in search engine optimization after keyword research. It lets you tweak all the technical elements of the web page to improve your chances at search engine rankings. Number 1. Content Now, you know that the content of the website is under your control. The same way, technical details are also up to you, and not just the programmers. But on-page SEO optimization also starts with content. The page is deemed to be good by a visitor only when the content is useful to them. It is the first and the only thing that matters to them. The same is true for search engines, because the user is their priority. Good content, when it comes to SEO, can be defined as information that meets the user's demand and has a good number of resourceful and authoritative links. Number 2. Title Tag Then there is the title tag, 
the second critical on-page optimization factor. So, the title tag is an HTML tag that exists in the header section of every web page. This is the first piece of context on your web page. It can be seen in your browser window and the SERP. Number 3. URL After internal linking, the next factor to consider for on-page SEO is the order of the categories on your website. Let's do this with an example. If your URL looks like https colon slash slash www.websitename.com slash US News slash Washington, it's a good one because it goes in the right order, because it goes from overall US News to Washington in particular. Search engines use this information to understand the relevance of a web page. Number 4. Meta Description Then there is the Meta Description, which has been important right from the early days of SEO. This is the description that comes right after the title of your page on the Search Engine Results page. It gives the user a peek into the content of your page and is extremely important. Number 5. Headlines This is another critical part of search engine optimization. A good headline for your blog posts seems like an obvious answer, but you would be surprised at how many websites completely ignore keyword research for this element. A good headline not only generates user interest, but also helps you stand out from the crowd on the search engine results page. Number 6. User Experience And finally, there is the issue of the user experience on the front end. Most users are likely to be non-technical people who would like to be able to find what they want right away, or at least with some amount of ease. Link Building When a website has been linked in the content of other websites, it's like a positive review from the search engine's point of view. It's like vouching for your content enough to be willing to redirect some of their traffic to your website. Link building is still an important factor, and you just need to make sure that they make sense to the users of the website. This can be done by ensuring that your links are useful to the visitors of a website, organically placed, give the user relevant and high-quality content, contain good anchor text. Let's understand the difference between a good link and a bad one from the search engine's point of view. Here are the factors. Number one, the web page's authority. You need to find websites that will link back to your content, but it's important that those websites be voices of authority. Number two, websites relevance. If you run a sports website, a link back from a voice of authority on sports means a lot more than a forum that has nothing to do with sports at all. So you also need to pick websites that are intimately related to your content, products, or services. Number three, the link's position on the page. The location of the link is a really important part of linking. If it's in the sidebar or footer, it doesn't have as much value as something that's in the beginning or middle of the content. Number four, editorial placement. After location, you need to see if the words that the hyperlink is attached to make it an editorial link. If it is placed such that their visitors get interested in your content, then the link is editorially placed. Number 5. The Link's Anchor Text This is a new term for you in this book. Anchor text is the part of the link that is clickable, anchor text in this case. Search engines, especially Google, take the anchor text of a link quite seriously and as a parameter to increase your website's ranking too. Search Engines and Links Search engines, essentially, like to use two types of links to decide the ranking of a website. The first is the type of links that help discover new content, and the second is the kind of links that help the search engine rank a website. This decision is made after the web pages are crawled and the content on those pages is extracted to be indexed. When the search engine is satisfied because the linking meets the above-mentioned criteria and has the right set of keywords, it's ready to rank the page. As we now know, the decision is not just limited to the content of the page. It looks at the links from the external websites and judges the value of those links to decide the worth of your website. As you manage to get more links from high-value websites, your website's chances of being ranked higher on the search engine results page increase. How to Execute a Content Marketing Strategy Along with SEO, 
content marketing is a very important part of modern marketing. When you combine these two concepts, if your execution is flawless, you can make your website an unstoppable force. If you make a content marketing strategy and keep search engine optimization in mind, your brand will be able to make the most out of any digital campaign. These kinds of strategies are often called integrated strategies because they bring two powerful concepts together. When SEO meets content marketing, when a customer of a certain product or service has a question, they immediately jump to a search engine and enter the question in the search bar. The likes of Google then find a website that can answer that question. When you are trying to capture that segment of your customers, you have a chance to reach them directly by optimizing your content. This is about giving them the right information at the right time. That is how search engine optimization and content marketing come together and benefit your brand. The execution process. This has a few simple steps. Once you put them in place, you will be able to take full advantage. Here's how it works. Step 1. Figure out your audience. Optimizing your content is all about making it easy for the user to find the products or services they want. So, you need to start by identifying who these customers are. Once you do that, you will be able to create the kind of content they are looking for. You need to identify your present customer base. Finding out who they are will point you towards data on what they like and what more they are expecting from your brand. This kind of data is both qualitative and quantitative. So do your research on age, gender, purchase history, and engagement with your website or brand. This gives you a rough description of your average existing customer. The next data point is to identify your competition. See what your demographic is looking for in your competition and why they are seeking those brands out. Step 2. Define yourself. Figure out current topics of discussion and create content accordingly. Make sure you speak like a voice of authority on the subject. If this requires more work and research, invest resources in it, because in the long run, you will see great results. Step 3. Do your keyword research. You know what this is all about. Step 4. Create great content. Once you have the unique content topic and the keywords that will help you reach the audience you are targeting, you must take the content beyond your blogs. You might even want to consider expanding the website to contain long-form content, like white papers and ebooks. Videos are a big part of the SEO game. Step 5. Update your content. The final step is to stay on top of your content game. This is possible by updating content that is relevant long after it is published. You know that updating headlines and descriptions along with the keywords and tags is useful. 10 SEO Best Practices When you discuss best SEO practices, white hat SEO and black hat SEO are two terms that you will hear a lot. White hat techniques are those that help give your website goodwill in the eyes of search engines through good practices. Black hat techniques are basically the opposite. When you try cheap gimmicks to fool the search engine, you create ethical concerns and risk getting penalized by search engines. Number 1. Keyword Placement When you have a good set of keywords, it is natural to want to use them more often to get traction for your content. You already know not to overdo it, but you must also make sure that the main keyword is placed at the top of the content. This is because Google likes to see high-value keywords right on top, like in the first line. Number 2. Search Intent Then there is the term called search or user intent, which analyzes the reason behind each query. This is Google's priority, because when they know why a user wants to know something, they can find the websites that answer the question with those parameters in mind. So if you want to be on the first search results page, this is what you need to crack as well. Number 3. Page Speed The speed at which your web page loads is not just a matter of convenience for your user but also an important SEO practice. This wasn't always the case, but in today's market, if you have a slow-loading page, your users will run like they are on fire. Search engines don't like recommending such pages to their users. Number 4. Use HTTPS If you don't know it already, HTTPS makes your web page more secure. This is because the data exchange between the server and the user is encrypted when your website is secured with the HTTPS protocol. 
You can verify this by looking at the URL in the loading bar of the browser and seeing if there is a lock icon there. Number 5. Avoid duplicate content. I have mentioned this briefly when talking about keeping the content on your website unique, but this is what Google looks for. It says very clearly that the website should not have duplicate or near-duplicate content on different pages of your website. Number 6. Optimize your images. Adding images is a great way to break textual content on a page. But if they are not optimized, they will take forever to load and even slow down the overall page speed. This brings you back to bad user experience. You have certainly spent a lot of time picking the right images for the content you created. Number 7. Insert relevant hyperlinks. I have discussed link building wherein other websites link to your content, but you might also want to think about doing the same. It is normal to think that it might drive traffic away from your page, but it is an integral part of SEO strategy. When you link back to authority pages that have relevant information and are trustworthy, you give the visitor good information. This makes your website a place of valuable and quality information and helps with ranking. Number 8. Use your keyword research. You know that this is an important part of making sure your website gets visibility with a search engine. You want to create content that is consumed, and for that, you need to use the words that your customers and potential customers are using to find your products and services. Number 9. The Google Search Console. This is a great way to understand how your site is performing on the search engine results page. This is like a dashboard for your website and is incredibly helpful with SEO. It comes with many features like reports on three of the most critical factors, performance, enhancement, coverage. Number 10. Long-form content. This has gone out of fashion because people aren't reading long-form content as much as they want to. But the truth is, long-form content has a better chance of ranking higher on Google. There is plenty of research to show that the top performing pieces are long format articles that have more than 3,000 words. Advanced Tactics Learning about the best practices is a way to get in the game and stay there. But over time, you need to build on those learnings so you can take it to the next level and edge out the competition when it comes to running digital campaigns. That requires employing a few advanced strategies. Number 1. Build Topic Clusters This is about a cluster of content that is created from a main theme. You create a variety of topics as subcategories and link to the page with the main theme. This means you have one umbrella topic and many other pieces under it, so that your readers who are interested in that topic stay on your site for a longer period of time till they get all the information. It also gives you the opportunity to place hyperlinks of these pieces among themselves as related topics. Number 2. Do an SEO audit. The other way to improve your SEO is to audit your website. This helps you understand the link between sales and search traffic. You can hire experts to help you out, but if you understand the base logic, you will be able to do it yourself. Audits are a systematic way of understanding a concept or an event. Typically, this word is associated with financial stuff, but it's a real thing in the world of SEO too. It helps you engage your existing customers while attracting new ones. When you perform an SEO audit, you analyze the performance of your website on the whole and create goals and strategize for the future. This helps you increase your profits by fixing any problems or gaps you might have with the existing content on your website. Number 3. Look for journalist keywords. These are keywords that journalists use when they are looking for data. Not to burst your bubble, but journalists often use Google to look for specific statistics to embellish their articles. When you use the keywords that they are likely to use, you give your website an excellent chance to be backlinked in their pieces. When you catch the eye of a journalist from a reputed publication, you get a link back from a high-quality web page. Number 4. Work on internal linking. This is an underrated SEO technique that you can take advantage of. When you link pieces from your own website, you signal to the search engine that you have useful information elsewhere on your website. This is an opportunity for the search engine to discover new content, which is a huge factor when it comes to ranking your website. Number 5. Use dynamic parameters. You need search engines to crawl your web pages easily, 
so that they can be indexed well. So you need to use pagination, which is a process of spacing your content out across multiple pages. This is usually used to divide products on e-commerce websites. How to measure and track SEO results. Whether you are using Google Analytics or some other service, you need to keep track of how your SEO strategies are working. This gives you the chance to see which tactics are right for your content and what needs to be done about the strategies that are not working. Do you need to tweak it or abandon it and go in a different direction entirely? The answer to these questions lies in data crunching. Once again, you can hire an SEO expert who will break it down to you, but it is not that difficult. Number one, organic traffic. The first one is to identify how you are doing in terms of organic search traffic coming in from search engines. These are the results a user gets when they type in a certain set of words into the search bar. The number of visitors your site is getting from this is the first thing to learn. This is because it is targeted. They are looking for a specific detail, and if you have the answer, you should be ranked high enough to cater to their needs. Number 2. Quality of SEO Traffic The best way to determine whether the traffic you are getting is quality traffic or not is to check the increase or decrease in the conversion rate. This means you need to inspect whether the people coming to your site are buying your product or service. If they are new users, are they getting converted into paid customers? There are several tools that can tell you if and when this is happening. Number 3. Keyword Ranking Once you optimize your website, you will be able to track the results for long tail and specific keywords. You can do this by doing a simple Google search for those keywords. Your best case scenario is to rank on top of the page, which is what a quarter of people click on in the SERP. Number 4. Identify Slow Loading Pages This is often ignored. But if you look at the time it takes for your web pages to load, you will know if that is what you need to work on. If it takes the page longer than 1 to 3 seconds, you are out of the game. The page speed is a big factor when it comes to Google rankings, as mentioned before. Number 5. Engagement Metrics There are many metrics that teach you about user behavior. Here are some popular ones. Time on page, also called dwell time. This is the amount of time visitors are spending on a particular page. If they are spending very little time on a long format piece, you know that they are not reading it. Pages per visit. This tells you how many pages a visitor has gone through, which tells you how engaging the content has been. So you can make changes to the content accordingly, or leave it as is. Bounce rate. This is the rate of visitors leaving a page without browsing it. It tells you whether visitors are finding the quality of content engaging or not. So, be sure to read the data, but also use your own judgment to understand what the numbers are saying. Conclusion The things you might not know about search engine optimization could fill a book. Well, it's true. So first of all, congratulations on making it to the end. In this book, I have tried to talk about all the things that make a search engine like your website. From what SEO is, to its importance to every kind of website, the fundamentals have all been laid out. You have also learned extensively about terminology and what it means to engage in good and bad practices. You have learned about the penalties if you don't play by the rules and the rewards when you do. You have also learned about shortcuts and why it is a good thing to avoid them. You have even looked at advanced tactics and how simply they can be implemented. Now, a lot of this can be outsourced to professionals who know a lot about the tools that can get all of this and more done quickly and efficiently. But if you can spare the time and do this in-house, you can divert those resources to more creative endeavors that are at the heart of your operations. When you get that high ranking on SERPs as you dream, you gather a lot of eyeballs and might turn them into loyal customers for a lifetime. And that stuff cannot be bought, oftentimes not even with paid advertising.